All right, thank you. Thank you, everybody. We're back here on Channel 4. I'm James Garpello, and I just want to say we're in for an extra special hot corner with James Garpello, all right? We are here with my esteemed colleague, Damone Drew. Damone, how are you doing today, bud? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, I've heard a lot about your debating skills, so I just want to let you know I'm the best in the biz. <laughs> all right. Okay, all right. Go ahead and laugh. So, as we all know, in the hot corner with James Garpello, what we have here is our Great old topic box in here. We got a bunch of different topics, all right? We do not know what topic we are going to be debating. We are just going to pull it out and just let it fly, all right? Let's see what our first one is here. You, are you ready for this? You oh, sure you're ready? Oh, definitely ready. All right. Oh, we're coming out of the gates firing here today. <laughs> first topic is abortion. Okay. Demone, would you like to start? All right, ready to kick your ass. Let's go. Well, James, picture this. An innocent young woman who gets raped and is impregnated. Do you not feel she she'll be able to have an abortion just because she's being forced against her will into the sex? All right, look, we're, I'm going to quote a favorite author of mine, right? Dr. Seuss. A person is a person, no matter how small. All right, now look, that line might sound very cheesy, but it could not be any more true. And look, I, I do not condone the rape that we're talking about right now in that situation. But at the end of the day, we are talking about the life of another person within that that woman and that person, that baby, cannot make a decision for him or herself. So how can that decision be made by the mother? I just, that doesn't seem right to me. But that person wouldn't be a person if the girl didn't get raped. So how did that even make sense on what you just said? All right, look, the rape situation is very cloudy and gray. I understand that. We can go on and on all day about that, okay? But let's talk about the real prevalent issue right now is the kids who think they can just have sex all day, you know, whatever, unprotected sex, and they just assume that the pregnancy won't happen to them. Oh, it'll happen to anybody else, but not us. Because that right there is a slippery slope. Because if they think they can't have kids or anything like that, they're not wearing condoms or any proper protection, then they just lead into STIs and STDs. They're gonna be coming around a lot more frequently because of that. So you're telling me that these kids can have a, a cop-out plan of just an abortion anytime problem arises in their life? I'm not saying that Having a child is a punishment. It should be something that you think about and you make a proper decision about, which is why these kids need to be using protection. So I think this topic can lead into the discussion of teen pregnancies and just a lack of proper protection in the world. But do people not have the right to decide what is right for their own body? Think about this. In the video, Death by Delivery, you see the dangers going through these pregnancies. <laughs> I got another source for you. And in Willie's Parker's piece, Life's Works, A Moral Argument for Choice, it took a depth at look, and look why someone should not have a decision for any choices that they make in their life. For instance, a person chooses what they eat, what they drink, what they do for work, how they get up, how they treat each other, even going to sleep. They decide when they brush their teeth or not, exercise or not. James, understand this. How is this decision about their own body and well being any different from how they make any other choice? Please explain that. Please get into my head on why this makes sense on your part. Please. It's because their body isn't the only one in the equation right now, okay? There's another life at hand here that we have to consider, okay? All right. Before we get too amped up, we got two more topics to go here, so you got to bear with me, all right? So let's, let's move on and see what our next topic is here. Shake it up. All right. I'll rip the paper here. Oh, okay. This is... Very prevalent topic today. All right. This question is reason or faith? Which is more prevalent in the world and what do you think people should be following? All right. Personally, as a follower of the Catholic Church, I firmly believe the stories of the Bible hold true for how the world works and everything like that. Listen, the problem with that statement right there is you said stories. Stories. Today, we need actual proof. Facts that leave no room for debate. <laughs> I will actually respectfully have to disagree with your statement. The origin story, the idea of God creating the earth from nothing, that is not possible. I don't know why you think that's possible. It's not. Did you take science in middle school? Probably did. What was the first thing you were taught about matter? Matter cannot be created or destroyed. Only changed. But oh, stop, stop, stop. I'm not finished here. Listen up. I'm going to teach you some facts. When there was sickness and disease and death all around humans hundreds of years ago, what happened when people prayed for help, James? What happened? The praying for saving help people survive the Black Death? Did it? Those who survived were saved by their Lord, and those who died 
God has a path in mind for everyone, so it's time for them, in the eyes of God, to move on and die. That's why they die. How can you prove that those people prayed? Were you there? What about the atheists who survived without God praying to? Also, how do you explain Darwin's theory of evolution? There's a legit evidence to point to the fact that we all develop from each other. There's similarities in our bodies that cannot be explained in any other way. So please explain to me what you're trying to say, because it's not making any sense. Who is to say God, when creating everything, wasn't allowed to have overlapping similarities across different species? Is that a, is that a rule somewhere? Because if so, show me the rule book. God can do whatever he wants. So having two species that are similar, that helps them coexist and interact with each other. And regardless of all that, there's a few things that reason just does not factor in ever. They never factor in faith. People of faith, we factor in reason occasionally, but it doesn't go the other way. Have you ever seen the documentary Extremists? Because if you shouldn't, first off, you definitely should. It is a great film. It oh, Tears. I was in tears watching this. That's It's emotions. That's what faith has, emotions. Reason doesn't have that. And you know what? In that video, the doctors at the hospital they're filming at are attempting to use reason, logic, to find solutions to keep people alive. But they don't understand that in situations like that, it's not always about keeping people alive, you know? I mean, imagine this. You're laying in a bed, attached to a machine, tubes going in and out of your body from all over, and that is the only reason you're alive, because of all that. Is, is that any way to live? I know I would not want to live like that. The patient's feelings aren't being factored in to the job of being a doctor. Because as a doctor, your only goal is one thing, make sure the patient doesn't die. So what they need to understand is that Everybody dies eventually. It, it's a part of life. It, we, we live, we die. That, that's what it is, okay? And prolonging that death for someone by having them be immobilized in a bed for five, ten years, that's not a way to live your life. You can't connect with your family, your kids, your husband, your wife, whoever it may be, your aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters. You can't connect with people, enjoy their life, their experiences, stuck in a bed like that. And I feel if someone has a strong connection to their God, whoever that God may be, and they feel that their God will take care of them in that second life, I think that it is time for them to go, and they can make that decision to go against the reason, the logic of staying alive. And that is where reason has to take a back seat to faith. All right, that looks like all the time we have there for that topic, all right? You're not getting too angry, too heated right now, are you? <laughs> angry or heated, God. I'm winning all day. Come on. Bring your winning best all shot. day. Boy, hey, ladies and gentlemen, do we really think he's winning right now? Come on, baby. It's not over yet. We got our third and final topic right here, all right? All right. What is it? Give it an extra good shake, all right? All right, our third and final topic of the day will be hmm. suffering. Ah, uh, suffering. All right. Who do you feel is responsible for human suffering, mm -hmm. and why do you think we suffer in general? Before you start, I'm going to go first this time. Go right ahead. Look, we all suffer because it's something God wants for us to go through. God made his very own son suffer so that people could be freed from sin. And when we suffer in our own lives, it is a learning experience for us as God wants us to continue to grow and develop into better people. So you mean to tell me that God is responsible for suffering brought over over 7 billion people on the earth? Are you crazy? How can, how can that even sound possible to you, James? Please explain this to me. God has no hand in our suffering. Human suffering is brought by human decisions, our decisions. The suffering in ours and ours alone. But how, how do you explain natural disasters? Okay, exactly that. Natural. The forces of nature has been brought thoroughly researched, which is why we anticipate and prepare for them. Here's one. The Flint water crisis. That was a very unexpected event. How do you explain that? Yes. While people weren't prepared for that at all, then that is a tragic crisis that's happened. It's still something that still just happened to us. The real crisis of that is how nothing was done to solve that problem, as the government just ignored it all. As shown in our documentary, filmed about it, this essentially turned into a human disaster. Do you mean to say that God made the only people who can solve the problem, not on purpose, so innocent families can suffer? Please, how does that make sense? Look, God works in mysterious ways. This problem resulted in exposing some corrupt officials in Flint who tried cutting corners to save money. These men deserve to be exposed, and God exposed them. That's all I can say about that. Okay, all right, all right. But at that expense of innocent families with the young children, though? Look, I don't know why God chose them or why he wanted to kill his own son. I'm not God. I kind of wish I was. It'd make my job a whole lot easier. But what I do know is this. 
Everything God does has a purpose, and there's a lesson to be learned from everything he does. Alrighty then, that looks like all the time we had here today. Once again, this was the Hot Corner with James Carpell. Extra special thanks to my guest, Demonja, right here. This man was electric. Hey, I could have went all day if they didn't stop us. Hey, what can I say? It was good to actually talk about these topics, you know, learn about everything, not let people know the knowledge, but actually think about what they need to do. It's really good to bring these up and actually talk about them. Bring out to the world. I agree more. Thank you again, Demonja. Everybody have a good night.